Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Thomas Bostuff here, and today I'm playing the Stanley Parable. Now, this is a game suggested to me by my friend Will, and it's interesting, I guess? And you can see my... right here, it's... what the heck? So trippy. Like, you can see everything. Like, this is Inception stuff right here. But anyways, let's begin. <laughs> I think I have a cold. Sorry if, I, if I'm if i sniffing a lot. Ah, <sighs> uh, load. Load for me. Load. Load for me. The end is... End is never the end is never the end is never the end is ne what? What? This is the story of a man named Stanley. Hi, Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Hmm. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Sounds like Orders something I came do to him day. through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley... Maybe was happy. He was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. What is this? He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. What? No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here, I can oh. be happy forever. Let me out. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Let me out. Hours passed. Then days. Let me out. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He oh will gosh, be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Um... What? What just happened? What is this game? What the heck? Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Where's the meeting room? Meeting room, hello. Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Shall we be a rebel on... No, door on his left. Okay. Hi. No, that doesn't open. Okay. Hello, what's in here? Oh. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Tips Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping he might find an answer oh. there. How does a solvus coat let it ball up inside you? Take out a pass. Take it out. Pass it. Sure side. What is this game? I. 
I'm gonna look at the slides. Everyone is unique. You, most of all. Why, thank you. I am unique. Hmm. Numbers on the slides. Slides, charts, charts, slides. Ha <laughs> um, ha! What? Rate in which the same slide is depicted on the same information. I'm gonna leave now. Wait. Oh, one sleeve room. Oh, hello. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around <laughs> and got back on track. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Going downstairs. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. What? He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was what crazy. Is this and then game? something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking heck? mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no Am reason Am I going in circles? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? That's why did question. doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, what? Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just Where? hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is this all, all a dream. A dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, Where an explanation. Go? His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go oh, back the same to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh. Wait. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled what? that he had still not woken up. How I? was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything, everything that I'm doing and thinking? thinking? Huh. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth what? was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was what Stanley is this? Himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock. What? After all, where he knew for am I going? That this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. Where am I going? So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his what? back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please. What on earth? It's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my, my job. job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Um, Everything okay. will be fine. I am okay. okay. What is this game?
Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Okay. Um, this is the story of a woman named Mariella. What the heck? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her what? place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am oh saying, I am in control I don't of my understand mind. this game. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career. And by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this. So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring Sorry. down at the body. What is this? And then she turned and ran. <laughs> sure, okay. Whatever. Uh, I don't understand this. Am I back? Am I Stanley? I'm back. All of his co-workers were gone. Oh my gosh. I know Stanley what... Stanley decided to go to the meeting oh, room. Oh, I see now. I see what Will was talking about. It's one of those choose your own... Uh, sorry. It's one of those choose your own adventure games. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, it's one of those choose your own adventure games. Yet there was not a single person here either. <laughs> Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find a coming to a staircase. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh no, where this is going? Okay, that was a. Um. I want to see about this door back here. Where does this go? Executive bathroom. Oh, that didn't go anywhere then, okay. <laughs> Where did this go? That didn't go anywhere either. Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, the heck? unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Oh. What is this? I don't understand this game. I guess I'll just go down the elevator. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Okay then. Um... What Stanley walked straight ahead through the what? large door that read Mind Control Facility. No. The 
these doors are gonna close behind me. What does it say? Light is on. Call. Exit. Okay, never mind. Mind control facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Um, this is a weird game. Ooh, camera. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley Let's really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? This game's deep. <laughs> no. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. Look, his own fired. life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Yeah. Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Red button. What does that say? What's this button do? Five. Mind control. I don't know what I should press. Do I press the five or the red button? Um, um, uh, I don't like decisions. I'm gonna go with number five. Does that not do anything? Okay, I guess it doesn't do anything. Okay. Red button it is. I can't press it. Where? Can't press the red button. Boop, boop. All right then, let's go this way. What happens when I press the five again? I guess it does nothing. Doors don't close behind me this time. What? System. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Um. Uh, I don't know. Off. Okay. All right then. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? Huh. How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? 
What other mysteries did this strange building hold? I wonder. But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he Plot had twist. been seeking, the army's at the door. but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. It's no deep. longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. What? That was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Is this the end? It's a short game. Um... Is this the end of the game? It was good. Is this back at the beginning? All of his co-workers were gone. Oh, it, it is. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Um... I guess I'll end it here. Um, uh, thanks everybody for watching this interesting video. Um... I'll have a link for... Uh, uh never mind. I'll have a link for Will's channel in the uh, description. I uh, give a huge shout out to him. He gave me this game. I'm really thankful that he did. And, uh... This has been the Stanley Parable. It's an interesting game. Don't understand it. But, uh... Thanks all, thanks you all of you guys for watching. Uh, like, favorite, subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and uh, I will see all of you guys in the next video. Bye.